Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. It's uh, <clears throat> good to be here again. Um, today's episode is something very, very important. We're going to go over the definition of effectiveness. So this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Well, we're going to go over what does effectiveness actually mean. Um, really cool concept here. We're going to go over a little bit of like what effectiveness is and then demonstrate a fable or a parable that will help us to quickly grasp this concept of what effectiveness is. And it's like super powerful. It's a concept that I use all the time in my life. And that everyone should use because of the the natural law, the natural principles that it follows. Um, so, going right into this, um, I'm gonna try and give a little bit more more um, thought. So, shout out to my mother; she's amazing. Uh, she's been listening to these and she gave me this feedback, and so I'm gonna give it a shot in trying to not read as much of the book, but rather to speak my own thoughts, my own experiences, and. Uh, kind of just say like why this stuff's important to me and why it's important to just anybody in general. So going off of that, um, the seven habits are essentially, but I'm still going to follow like the, the book and teach from the book, but it's just going to be more so like me speaking the words instead of me like reading the words, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so going straight into it, um, it says here that like the seven habits, they're, they're habits of like effectiveness. Now, the reason that is is because they're they're based on these like eternal laws. They're based on principles. And so when something is based on principles, it's a rocky, like it's solid, rocky foundation, which makes it so that you can maximize opportunities. You can win in the ways that matter most. You can find the most joy and meaning in life. Like, this world was created, whether you believe in a higher power or not, like it doesn't actually matter. Like the world was created in such a way to where it's set up to, to where those who harmonize their lives with natural laws and natural principles will succeed more in their definition of success, whatever they define that as. They just will. And so that's what he's saying here is that principles, because these habits are based on principles, they're going to provide you with the most accurate map that you can find. And because it's the most accurate map, and because you know the rules and the gameplay, you'll be able to win time and time again. Not just you, but everyone who does this. There's this idea of this abundance mentality that anybody can line themselves with principles and that it will always work. And so it allows you to continually grow in this upward, upward spiral and get better and better and better and better. He says that there is another paradigm or another principle that the seven habits follow. And that is the principle of a PPC balance. What's interesting is he says here, they're based on the paradigm of effectiveness that is in harmony with a natural law, a principle I call the PPC balance, which many people break themselves against. So there's a quote from Stephen Covey that, is goes along these lines and it says you cannot break the law you can only break yourself against the law so it's like you reap what you sow right that's a natural principle you cannot play in the spring forget to sow in the summer and then reap in the fall you just can't do that it's it's, it's just natural law and so by, by doing so by playing in the spring and then forgetting to, to forgetting to sow in the summer you are essentially breaking yourself against that principle and you will not have anything to eat so that's what he means by that so he's talking about this pc ppc balance to illustrate this principle of the ppc balance he tells the story of this fable now this is one of the greatest examples i've ever found on, on this and so i'm grateful that he uses it because it's clearly illustrates this principle there is a there's a farmer he's very very poor um and one day he wakes up goes out to his farm or whatever he has there and he has a goose okay and he looks in the goose nest and he sees a golden egg and this man is jumping for joy right he thinks it's some kind of like trick but then he like realizes that this could actually be gold so he gets it appraised and it's gold and it ends up being like amazing and makes him filthy rich well 
The next day he wakes up, same story, another golden egg. Next day, same story. Next day, same story. Next day, same story. Every single day, this goose lays a golden egg for him. He gets fantastically wealthy, like overwhelmingly wealthy. Until like, it seems too good to be true. Um, what happens with this though is with his increasing wealth comes this like this greed and this impatience upon him. And he get it gets to this point where like he literally just can't wait to to have any more golden eggs. And so he goes outside and he just wants to get them all at once. And so he kills the goose, looks inside, and there's nothing in there at all. Absolutely nothing. No golden eggs. And so what's happened is the farmer has destroyed the goose that produces those golden eggs. So this natural law, like this basic definition of effectiveness that we're trying to illustrate, is the PP is the PPC balance that most people view if like effectiveness from a golden egg paradigm. They focus so much on the on the production, on the results, on the outcome. The more you produce, the more you do, the more effective you are. But it's actually a flawed paradigm, because if you do that, then you kill the goose. You kill the asset that produces those golden eggs. For example, let's say you want to drive a car, right? And miles is your production. You're trying to do distance and distance and distance, right? Well, if you don't stop for gas or to change your tires or to do, do an oil change, like you're not going to be able to get those miles anymore. It's not effective. It doesn't work. Same thing with like relationships. So out of a relationship comes lots of joy and happiness and like meaning if it's done based on true principles like integrity and gratitude, hard work, service, charity, love, right? Then like the fruits should be joy and meaning and happiness. But the asset or the production capability, the asset that produces those fruits or those golden eggs is the relationship itself. So you also have to to increase in the producing assets. You have to develop that relationship. And the more you develop the relationship, the more joy that you have, right? And so that's, that's kind of il- illustrating that right there. And so he says here, if you adopt a pattern of life that focuses on golden eggs and neglects, and neglects the goose, you will soon be without the asset that produces golden eggs. On the other hand, if you only take care of the goose with no aim toward the golden eggs, you soon won't have the wherewithal to feed yourself or the goose. So essentially, you, you cannot focus on one or the other. You, you cannot focus on just the joy and the, and the happiness of relationship, and you cannot focus on just the um, building the relationship. There has to be a balance on both. In the car example, you can't focus just on miles or you run out of gas and the car breaks down. But you also can't focus on just not driving it because then you don't get any miles and it doesn't serve you at all. So effectiveness lies in the balance. So the P stands for production or like the desired re- results, the golden eggs, the fruit, and then the PC stands for production capability. So it's the ability to produce those golden eggs or the asset that produces those. Um, and so that's kind of this balance. And so that, that's where if effectiveness lies is in the balance between production and production capability. And when you put those together, you then get massive results. And so the seven habits is essentially centering one's life on this ability to increase one's capacity while at the same time increasing their production of whatever their success is, where, where that be building relationships, where that be family life, where that be spiritual life, where that be money, like, and then also their capacity to produce those things, whether it be in their work, right? Like whatever it is, it lies in the balance of it. And since principles are, since seven habits are based on principles and principles apply to everywhere we go, then it just means that like, you can apply this stuff literally anywhere in any situation or role, in your life. So that's what's really cool about it. Um, and I've seen that in my life as I take in, as I take time out of my life to like go on runs, to read books, to increase my knowledge, to do strength training, to go to the gym or do push-ups or I have little like dumbbells in, in in my room or when I take time to read my scriptures, to pray my my, my higher being to 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 God. It's just like it's a no-brainer and it like literally makes everything 
so much easier because my production capability is also increasing. I'm not just seeking for for production. Um, and so this principle has like hugely impacted in, in, in my life. Also like on the doors selling where my sales skills, my ability to persuade and influence people is the production capability, whereas sales themselves is the production, the money I get from that. And so I need to increase my sales while at the same time increasing my sales skills. And if I can do both of those things, then I can really increase maximum effectiveness. But if I just increase my sales skills and I don't actually go out there and knock doors, I, I don't make anything. If I just knock doors and don't increase my sales skills, then I might burn out, but I'm not going to make a lot of money because I'm not going to be increasing my sales skills. And so that's the same in any relationship or work environment or whatever else you're doing. Um, so that's effectiveness defined and how the seven habits relate to that at certain habits of highly effective people. If they're based in this P P C balance. And we're gonna dive into that more as we go further in this book. But that's today's episode, guys, and thank you very much. Have a wonderful time. Um okay, actually I really want to do this right now. Um so may- maybe you've been hearing this, but Miles Avery is asleep on my bed right now. And he is snoring. So I don't know if you can hear him, but hopefully you can. Just a little, uh, my roommate. So just something funny to look forward to. Anyways, thanks guys. Have a good night.